What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to talk about five different VPN tunneling options. I'm going to use the word interchangeably VPN and tunnel because it's pretty much the same thing, but we're going to cover five different options you have and which ones that I like the most. So let's get right into it. So when we're talking about our VPN options today, there are different options. I'm going to talk about using WireGuard, OpenVPN, I'm going to use TailScale, and then Cloudflare Tunnel and then the VPN options that your router provides with you. So I know some of these options are going to overlap but the way they can be hosted are going to be different so that's what we're going to talk about. So let's get right into it and let's start off with TailScale. If you're not familiar, TailScale is one of the free VPN options and pretty much it works by similar to like the other ones, you install a client on your PC and then it goes through their servers to connect remotely. So I already have it set up but you can look through here, it has their site, they have a pricing option, but it is free to use and uh, there's different options, so you would just come in here and you can look at it, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on PCs they have a ton of different options and uh, you can connect it on different machines that support it for Linux, Windows, all types of OS's so you can see over here, Mac, iOS, Raspberry Pi, Linux, Synology, Android, and Windows so it is nice that you can just add the machine because you just install the client on the machine and then I'll show you in a second, but it lists all your machines out and then you could just RDP right into it or VNC or Telnet, SSH, whichever one you want to use. But it has it set that you can just get right into there and access the machine. So like over here I have my list of machines and from here I can actually just go into here and I could RDP into one of my machines. So if I was to open up RDP, I can come over here and I can uh, grab that. So you just do desktop. E45 TKHH. Now you can see it's able to RDP into that machine. I'm not going to because I'm going to make like an inception loop, but it just works that it's connected and we're all good from there. And then if we come down here into the little system tray, you can see TailScale is connected and that's how it connects back. So we can listen here. So you can see my status is connected for the machines. So that's how TailScale works. It's super simple and it just works as a nice little VPN. What I do like about TailScale is you don't need to open up ports because it doesn't go out through the typical VPN ports. It's not using the open VPN port or the WireGuard port. I think it does something with HTTPS or something like that. I'm not sure of how the back end fully works on it, but TailScale is a really good option because you don't need to port forward for it. So if you have an ISP maybe that doesn't let you open up ports on your router or it really limits down what you can do or maybe you just are very security conscious and you don't want to port forward, Telescale could be a really good option because you don't need open ports for it. It just goes through the internet. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's HTTPS or one of those other protocols like that. But Telescale is a really good option if you, know, you can't open ports and it's simple. You just gotta install a client and it's right there. After you link the machines together, it's super simple. So Telescale is pretty high up on the list of things I'm currently liking to use. I actually just converted using Telescale at work. I don't like that it limits to what I can connect to, but I can add additional machines. But I do like having a VPN tunnel back into the home, the whole home lab because then I have access to everything. But TailScale is really good if you just need access to one machine. So it works nicely that way and it does have a lot of other features that you can change like DNS options and network options and all sorts of stuff. So it does act like other VPN tunnel providers. Our next provider we're going to talk about is WireGuard. I've talked about WireGuard a ton on the channel. Uh, we have a couple videos using it. WireGuard is a really great VPN option. Um, if you're looking for your option and maybe Tailscale isn't for you, WireGuard is definitely one to check out. It does require a little more setup than Tailscale because you do need to run the server and the client. But if you run a home lab and you have a Docker environment, I already have a video and I'll put a link down in the description for it of how to set up the WireGuard server. And it's super simple in Docker, you just install the container and then it runs, you make the client and then you go from there. It is a little more complex as it does require you to have some understanding of Linux and uh, making the server up, but it is super simple and WireGuard is one of the better providers as it has better speeds and less limitations. Similar to Tailscale, it has options of how you can configure the DNS and other network options. You can change the subnet options, all sorts of stuff. But you can see it has you know all the documentation on the website. I've been using WireGuard for about a year now and I do really enjoy it. 
It can be installed on different options. You can do it on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS. We've done it on Docker. Look, they support all these different Linux distros. So there is a lot of stuff you can do with it. And um, like I said, I don't mind it. I just install it on Docker. It's a few clicks. I push it to my DDNS and then it's all set. I have my WireGuard server and I can connect all my clients to it. I can put it on my phone. I can put it on all my computers. And I can tunnel back into my house when I need to. So I really do like WireGuard. It's another really good option if you're looking for a VPN. Oh, and additionally, it's free to use. You're hosting it yourself, so there's no cost in it. It's just that it has to be set up, and you do need to open up ports for it. So if you do have an ISP that limits you, or you don't want to open up ports, WireGuard isn't going to work because it does need to have a port open to the public so you could use it, so you can access out and in. It's more so you can access in, but um, yeah, WireGuard's a good option. You can change the ports around so you have you know the non-standard ports open, but WireGuard is another one of those VPN providers that you could use. Next on our list of VPN providers is going to be OpenVPN. I actually first used OpenVPN when I started using VPNs. If you've watched the videos with Pi-hole on Raspberry Pi, this is something that can be integrated in with your Pi-hole installation. It also can be done with WireGuard, so it's just another way to host your WireGuard or OpenVPN server. But OpenVPN is another free option for using VPNs. You would host the server on your house, and then you'd have the client installed on your machines around. I originally used OpenVPN because my router supported it, and I'm going to show you that in a couple of minutes. My router supported it as the router would run as the server, and then it can make all the clients, and it handled all the networking so I didn't have to worry about anything. In the beginning, this was a really good option because I was new to networking and I wasn't really familiar with what I was doing yet, so it was really convenient to host an OpenVPN off my router. OpenVPN is a little bit slower than WireGuard, and but other than that, it's pretty much the same. The UI is pretty similar. I think I have it still installed. The UI is pretty similar, as you can see. It just has you know a little open up. I think it has a GUI. Uh, you can change some of the settings and add some configs, but really there's nothing too crazy to open VPN. It's just another uh, VPN provider. It is recognized pretty commonly, just so is WireGuard as a uh, you know a common provider to use. You know they have different options, so you can self-host it. They have the managed options, so if you were coming to self-host, then you could do it this way. I'm pretty sure there's a Docker container for it, and OpenVPN is recognized for a lot of the other containers that have to use VPNs, like the Torrent containers and stuff like that. Um, OpenVPN integrates usually with other providers, so you can make it that way. Uh, I know that's how it works, like the transmission container, if you ever use that in the Docker uh, template. I like OpenVPN, it's another free to use, you host it yourself, it's another good option, but I just moved off of it to WireGuard. I ended up running into some issues with it about a year ago, and that's why I made the change to WireGuard. I think it was just an issue with my firewall at work, and that's why I stopped using OpenVPN. But other than that, I really have no issues with it. I used it constantly for about two years at school, and I never had an issue with it except when I broke it myself. So OpenVPN is another good option if you're looking for a new VPN provider. The next option we have on making our own VPN is Cloudflare Tunnel. I'm going to be straightforward with it, it's not really the best option if you're looking to like RDP into a Windows machine or, or something looking like that. This is a better option if you're looking to access your Proxmox web GUI or you're looking to access like Apache Guacamole which I'm going to show you in the next in a minute or so because Cloudflare Tunnel is more of direct into you know HTTPS traffic. It has different options that you can configure, but I don't think it's going to work the best if you're trying to like RDP into a machine. Um, it does work with Cloudflare, and unlike the other ones, you do need to buy a domain for it. I know there's a way to get free domains, but it's not usually the best option that I think of. I know you can buy a cheap domain for about $10 a year, but to buy a domain just to be able to access your Proxmox terminal or something like that, I don't think it's the best option. I think using one of the other providers, whether it's TailScale, OpenVPN, or WireGuard, is a better option. But I will show you a way that you can use Cloud for a tunnel. Um, I have it set that it goes over to Guacamole. So if I go to guac.boremindtech.com, it opens up my Apache Guacamole uh, web admin. And from there, I can 
RDP with my with this to use my machine. So it's a lot of extra steps. And if you're not familiar, Guacamole is just like another version of TeamViewer that you can self-host, but it isn't the best. I'm not saying that this is the best option when it comes to uh, trying to remote into your machine, but as a complete fail-safe backup backdoor, it could work. Um, Cloudflare does completely encrypt everything. It doesn't expose you to the public, and as you can see, I'm able to access my machine via RDP. So, as you can see, I am using Glock.BorderPointTech.com, and it is tunneled into my home. So, the nice thing about using Cloudflare Tunnel is that is that if I try to ping it, it proxies it across and it gives it a completely different public address. So it's not going to see it as my home address, which is really nice in the end because I don't want myself exposed to the internet. Cloudflare Tunnels is a really good way to secure stuff to go out to the public because it's not going to open everything up and it's going to expose it safely. You don't need to port forward, open any ports or Cloudflare Tunnel to work, but you do need to pay for a domain. You can buy it either on Google domains or any of the other domain sellers or you could buy it off Cloudflare but it is the downfall that it's free to use but you do need to register your account with a credit card or something on payment file and you do need a domain to use and it doesn't really work the best if you want to use it for RDP or something like that so there are some caveats to it but it can work as a good backdoor in a situation like this to connect it to guacamole and then go from there my last option for using a VPN, and it is something that I covered most of these already, but your router can typically host a VPN off of it, and it, your router acts as the VPN server, and then it gives you the client config files to add clients to it. So I have an Asus router. I know OpenSense can do it, I know PFSense can do it, and probably most of the other router vendors can do it now too, because the VPNs are so commonly used. This is actually how I started, and you can see you could just open up and you could check off to use OpenVPN. My router supports PPTP, OpenVPN, IPsec, and WireGuard. IPsec's really cool that it offers because that's a site-to-site -site tunnel. So that's one of the really good options to use as a VPN. But if you just need a simple connection back inside to your house, OpenVPN or WireGuard are the best options. I wouldn't recommend using PPTP. It's dated and it's not a very good option to use. So you see if I was come over here and open up the WireGuard template it is going to give me the listed import I can change the subnet I can change the port it gives me advanced options so I can tell if I want to give a DNS IPv6 NAT and then it's gonna give me the keys um, it is a really good option because it's simple it's right there in your router you don't need to host it off something else your router is already acting as a server so why not use it to host your VPN but it is another good option if you don't have additional hardware to host off of it works. It gives you access to the whole network. I did this in the beginning when I first started home labbing and I'm um, trying to get tunnels back into my house and I do think this is a really good option if you're looking just for a simple connection. This is also good for a back door. Typically if your router is online it's not going to go down like a, a server might on your on your home lab or maybe a Raspberry Pi or something else that you host your VPN off of. If that goes down, hosting your VPN or having at least one configured off your router is a really good option because it is your back door back into your house. It's free, theoretically. I know you pay for your router, but it's not an additional service that is coming with your router. It's already there. And um, it's really simple to configure. So. I like this option as well, and it's just another one that is good to have as a backdoor or anything like that. So that was five options for VPN tunneling to get back into your house. These are all, for the most part, free providers. Some of them have additional purchases that you might need to make, like using Cloudflare tunnels. You do need the domain. If I was to rank them, it would probably be WireGuard, TailScale, OpenVPN, then it would be hosted off my router, and then Cloudflare tunnels. It's not here to knock Cloudflare tunnels because I do like the option, but to VPN back into your house to access maybe a Windows machine or something else, it's not the best option. I could do it where I could have some other options to uh, play around with it, like use guacamole and be able to RDP into my machine, but it's not simple and it's not straightforward. I need to do additional steps to do it. Um, using WireGuard, I've used it for over a year. I had no issues. It works great. TailScale is another really good option if you can't port forward or you don't want to open up ports. And open VPN hosting off your router, the same options. So I hope you guys 
like this video if you guys use any of these providers comment down below or if you use a different provider comment down below what you use how to connect back to your home lab and how you do it join my discord so we can talk about it i'm always down to talk about any projects or uh, any topics that i come up in my videos if you have any questions or anything so let's chat about it in the discord and if you guys could drop a like and subscribe i'd greatly appreciate it and maybe check out some of my other videos i'm going to drop links to some of the other videos about wireguard and some of the other stuff that we talked about in this video today thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video